What's up, y'all? This is Dr. Sin Q. I am showing you today some of the FBI's secret files on Malcolm X. And I'm doing this as a test. I want to see um, what you think. If you, I mean, there's literally thousands of pages that the FBI had accumulated on Malcolm X. And if you enjoy this video and you'd like to see more, please let me know in the comments, like, share, and subscribe. But uh, this is just a bit of a test. I'm going to show you a few of the pages just to see what's going on. If I don't get a lot of likes and shares and subscribe, I guess, then I'll know if this is something you all are interested in or not. But here we go. Okay, subject file number for Malcolm X. They called him Malcolm X Little. Um, I don't know if many of you knew that that was his slave name, Malcolm Little, born in Omaha, Nebraska. And so uh, this here is his number, the, the file number that they associated with him. So this is dated February 17th, 1953. It says, the captioned individual has been the subject of a security investigation by this office. The Detroit division has verified the permanent presence of the subject in its division as residing and working at the addresses below. Uh, 4336 William Street, Inkster, Michigan. Uh, through my research, I found out that this was, um, oh, well, as like they say here, if you look here, you see uh, Wilfred Little. That was uh, Malcolm X's uh, older brother, who was a minister in the Nation of Islam. Many people uh, often hear about Minister Farrakhan and uh, other people in the Nation of Islam calling Malcolm a hypocrite, speaking out against him. But uh, his own brother, uh, Wilfred Little, who was, like I said, a minister in the Nation of Islam way before Malcolm, uh, was also calling Malcolm a hypocrite and um, speaking against him. But uh, this is the, this is uh, this file right here is dated in 1953. This is around the time that Malcolm had first joined the Nation of Islam. He was released from prison and um, he needed a place to stay so he stayed with his brother. Um, I encourage you to uh, Google 4336 William Street in Inkster, Michigan to see the house which is there. Um, I believe there was a fund started. People wanted to turn the house into a historical site. Um, don't know uh, how that turned out, but maybe some of you could let me know in the comments. But uh, yeah, he was released for parole on parole. Uh, right here it says, this individual has been the subject of a com communist index card. Uh, so basically, uh, when he got out, um, Malcolm, uh, I guess, had made some suggestions about being a part of the co joining the Communist Party or something along those lines. It says here, uh, subject, uh, th this individual has been the subject of a communist index card. Subject claimed in June 1950 that he was a communist. And during September 1952, he indicated membership in the Muslim cult of Islam. Uh, if you look here, it says, uh, This inv investigation was predicated upon information received from, and, you know, the FBI usually, uh, they red acted. When they black things out like this, they call that red acting. And uh, they red acted the uh, informant that... Uh, was close enough to Malcolm to be able to get this information. Um, it says this investigation predicated upon information received from blank blank Norfolk, Massachusetts to the effect that the subject uh, had written two letters uh, that included comments on communism. 
Subject was born May 19th, 1925 in Omaha, Nebraska, and is a citizen by virtue of his birth. And then it says employment information received from Boston informant. See, he had an informant in Boston uh, that um, he knew. Now, uh, when he hung out in Boston, in the streets in Boston, uh, uh, according to his autobiography, one of the closest people to him was a guy that he referred to as Shorty. I don't know what Shorty's real name was, but uh, just to let you know the way the FBI operates uh, when it comes to information, they usually uh, look for people who are your closest friends or family members to uh, obtain information from uh, about you or whoever the subject is. Uh, here it says the subject was born, uh, like I read already. Uh, information received from Boston, I read that. So uh, if you look here, it says uh, subject resides at 4336 William Street. Subject claimed 19, in June 1950 that he was a communist. And okay, we saw that already. Uh, this investigation, man, this is like a copy of the same form. I enlarged uh, his criminal record here. Uh, it says subject was sentenced to serve eight to ten years on a charge of breaking and entering in the right time and that he began this sentence February 27, 1946. Subject was eligible for parole May 29, 1951, but was denied parole at that time. I don't know if many of you know, but uh, Malcolm X was, uh, you know, like many uh, black males today and, and a lot of young black males strive to be uh, in the streets. He was out in the streets. He was a, a hustler. It says on September 23, 1953, uh, Norfolk Prison Colony, Massachusetts, stated subject is a former inmate and had been paroled in care of Michigan parole authorities on August 7, 1952. The following record was obtained from blank Massachusetts State Board of Probation. Uh, Boston, Massachusetts, the central repository for all arrest records in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And then here it lists uh, the crimes that uh, Malcolm had been uh, arrested for throughout the time. I, I highly recommend that you read the autobiography of Malcolm X um, to help you get uh, a more accurate idea of uh, what type of person Malcolm X uh, was. And here it says uh, Malcolm K. Little was Malachi Shabazz, Rhythm Red, Detroit Red. So these are the uh, aliases that he used while he was out in the street. Here it says Communist Party activities. The Communist Party has been cited by the Attorney General of the United States as coming within the purview of Executive Order 9835. I encourage you to Google Executive Order 9835, uh, so that um, you could, you know, see how this re file report relates to that. Uh, so several excerpts uh, for letters written by subject. Uh, these excerpts were not uh, quote, but rather notes jotted down on the contents of these letters. On June 29, 1950, the subject mailed a letter from which, uh, uh, and you see which blank copy the following information. So we don't know who that was. It could have been, uh, you know, someone in the post office. Uh, could have been, uh, you know, a letter. He could have, he could have uh, well, it says mailed the letter. So it was probably somebody in the post office that uh, opened his mail uh, at the post office. Maybe um, FBI informant in the post office or uh, an agent um, that uh, was studying Malcolm X but this is before Malcolm X was in the Nation of Islam. So the FBI was already looking at him because of him being, uh, him having some Communist Party activities. It says on June 29th, 1950, the subject mailed a letter. Oh, well, I just read that. Now here's, here's what the letter said. Tell blank to get in shape. It looks like another war. I have always been a communist. I have tried to enlist in the Japanese army last war now they will never draft or accept me in the U.S. Army. Everyone has always said 
you know, this is probably some, you know, bad word or something. Malcolm is crazy, so it isn't hard to convince people that I am. And, um, yeah, so he said the Japanese, he already tried to enlist in the Japanese army, so get in shape, it looks like another war. So I believe he's referring to the Korean War. So I believe the Korean War uh, started uh, like in 1950 or somewhere around there. And the Koreans, uh, uh, one of the things that started that war in Korea was uh, the Communist Party uh, in Korea. Here it says in January 1952, subject had been visited by blank, 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 a member of the Christmas Addicts Club of the American Youth for Democracy. Uh, and it says the A, uh, American Youth for AYD, which stands for American Youth for Democracy, has been cited by the Attorney General of the United States as coming within the purview of executive order, and this is supposed to be 9835. So I'm suspecting that any organization or group that comes within executive, the, within the purview of executive order 9835, that that means that um, they could be, uh, they qualify for being investigated by the FBI. Here it says there is no further information concerning the subject's communist activities in Boston. And we have uh, May 4th, 1953, the subject has become an assistant minister in temple number one of the Muslim cult of Islam. Temple number one was in uh, Detroit, Michigan. And uh, Malcolm's brother, uh, Wilfred, was the minister at that time. Here it says, uh, little plans to organize a temple of his own in Inkster, Michigan. And uh, yeah, that's basically that's what this this uh, file right here says. Then we have, uh, uh, during during investigation, it was ascertained that subject had failed to register for, for selective service. After being advised of the penalties, he registered with local board 102. Um, yeah, so registering for the selective service, um, I, I believe is still a requirement these days. Uh, I don't know, but... Um, I remember when I turned 18 years old, I received a letter uh, from the government that said I needed to register for the selective service and I went and registered. And the selective service is basically a, a list that um, if the uh, government, if the, if the uh, United States government goes to war, an, an official war, they have a draft and the draft is where, you know, anybody that's uh, at least at least the age of 18 and above that's registered with the selective service this is a list that they pull you from and the draft is I, I encourage you to google uh, selective service and draft um, so that you can get a better understanding of that um, of, of, of what that was about but it's basically uh, like an involuntary uh, selection where you uh, must go fight uh, they, they, they force you to join the military. <clears throat> the la they haven't had any official drafts anymore. I think the last draft that they had was when they uh, fought in Vietnam. Um, all of the wars since then have not been official wars, so they haven't had any drafts since then. Uh, anyway, uh, it says subject selective service status was verified by blank authorities during the late 1940s and information obtained from selective service records reflected that subject was registered with local board 59. During the course of an investigation by the Detroit division of the FBI in 1953, it was ascertained that the subject failed to register with local board 102, Plymouth, Michigan, which covered the subject's residence or with local board 94, which covered subject's place of employment. In an interview, subject stated, he had not registered for the Selective Services Act of 1948, and after being advised of the penalties under this act, he registered. Uh, then it says, uh, subject has identified as the present minister, this is 1954, March 16th. He was identified as the present minister of Philadelphia Temple since uh, March 5th, 1954. Now, when he moved to Philadelphia, uh, he stayed with... Um, a, a well-known minister uh, now known as uh, Jeremiah Shabazz. 
Um, but uh, Malcolm was the minister first of Philadelphia, and then uh, I believe uh, Jeremiah Sabaz was the assistant. And then uh, when Malcolm left Philadelphia uh, to become minister of the uh, temple uh, or mosque in uh, New York, Jeremiah took his place over Philadelphia. Uh, which it has another story of yeah, because Jeremiah, the if, if you Google Jeremiah Shabazz uh, and the Philadelphia uh, Nation of Islam uh, Black Mafia, uh, you'll learn a lot about the, um, the, the what, what went on in uh, Philadelphia with the Black Mafia in the uh, in that time period, which was 1950s and 60s, and uh, I think late 70s as well, early 70s. Uh, subject was paroled in the care of the Michigan parole authorities. In the event subject is in violation of his parole, the Detroit office will advise Michigan parole authorities. So um, FBI, even though they were watching him, right, they, uh, or while they were watching him, and just so you know how the FBI works, uh, the Federal uh, Bureau of Investigation, they only have jurisdiction over federal crimes so they can't like uh, federal um fbi cannot arrest you uh, for any local crimes that you've committed uh, what they can do is report you to the local law enforcement so what they were planning to do here is um you know report um uh any parole violations that they saw malcolm occur uh, uh, Malcolm do or whatever to uh, the the uh, to the parole board. So um, here it says a uh, uh, reference summary report of S A blank blank S A means special agent. So they blotted out uh, they red acted the special agent's name. It says on March 16, 1954, Detroit, Michigan, captioned subject has been identified as the present minister of the Philadelphia Temple of the Muslim Cult of Islam. Subject has been in charge of the Philadelphia Temple since March 5th, 1954. It is noted from reference report that the subject began serving an eight to 10 year sentence on February 27, 1946 in the state of Massachusetts. We gave you this information earlier. Uh, the Detroit office is requested to ascertain from the Michigan parole authorities whether the subject is presently in violation of his parole because he's not in Michigan, he's in Philadelphia. So they want to make sure, you know, find out if he's in violation, right? Uh, it says the Detroit office will, uh, I don't know what UACB advised the Michigan parole authorities. The subject presently resides at 1522 North 26th Street, Philadelphia. Okay, and that's it. Um, I, once again, I said, this is, you know, this is just a test. I want you to tell me what you think in the comments about this information. If you'd like for me to uh, reveal uh, some more uh, FBI documents on uh, Malcolm X, uh, then I can do it. Uh, just uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, like, share, and subscribe, please. Thank you.